What am I even doing? Do I look at the camera? <laughs> you need to get it. Okay, another video. <laughs> I spent a really long time studying today and I do not feel like going back at it just yet so I figured instead of watching Netflix I'll do something productive something that I've been wanting to do and that's make a video YouTube video okay and today in today's video I want to cover my experience in my special master's program Ooh, I forgot to introduce myself I'm Britt um, I'm first year osteopathic med student so I got into this school by doing a master's program there um, so for those of you who don't know, special master's program, special master's programs or post bac programs are uh, programs that some pre-med students do in order to help them either beef up their application or prepare them or get them into med school. Um, so like I said, I think I said this before, I applied to three programs uh our finished applications to three different programs i got into all of them but the one that i ended up choosing was the one that i at the school that i'm going to now um i really liked that program i was very drawn to it one because they did not require you to retake the mcat a lot of programs and it's the ones that i was attracted to were ones that you know either didn't require you to retake the program as long as you retake the MCAT as long as you had made a certain score or programs that kind of helped you out with the MCAT process. They may have offered a, uh, a prep course or something like that in, in addition to the either post back or master's program. Um, I picked the one that I went to because they clearly laid out what it was that they expected of us. Um, they expected us to get and maintain a 3.5 GPA at least and pass a comprehensive exam at the end of the school year. And I thought, oh, I don't have to retake the MCAT and all I have to do is get a 3.5. <laughs> all I have to do is get a 3.5. And pass the comprehensive exam at the end of the year. All right, I'm going to do it. When we got there, I think a lot of us were surprised and a little nervous or a lot of nervous <laughs> because it turned out the grading was not what we had thought. So it's not the type in this particular school. I don't know what it's like in other uh, special master's programs, but in this particular master's program, we're all graded against each other. So it wasn't like... An A is from a 95 to a 100, and uh, an A minus is from 90 to 95, and a B plus is from 85 to 90, whatever. It was, you were graded against your peers. So in order to get an A in any exam, any class, whatever, you had to get a uh, score at least one standard deviation above the mean and then anything below that within a few points. I don't know exactly how many it was. I don't know exactly what the grading was, but this is the way it, it kind of turned out. Um, anything below, a little bit below a standard deviation above the mean uh, was like a A minus and then anything at the average was about a B, B plus, probably B, yeah. Um, so, mind you, we're in this program with a bunch of people who are super smart. There were people who had applied to med school and, and, and for some, whatever reason didn't get in who, I don't know, whose MCAT score may not have been great or who had great MCAT scores but their GPAs in school weren't that great or who had been out of school for a little while. Um, and been working and had another career and then decided, okay, I want to go back into medicine, but the school recommended, okay, well, you, you're, we're not going to, or other schools didn't accept them into their, or their medical programs, but this school said, hey, well, why don't you try out our master's program? If you prove to us that you can handle the curriculum, then we'll let you in. You just got to meet these requirements. So it was hard. <laughs> the purpose of telling you guys about the grading and how you had to score one standard deviation above the mean was to point out the fact that some it was hard to get A's in a lot of classes because 
first semester was reasonable. The averages weren't ridiculous first semester. They were kind of low. Um, so I was able to, you know, I, I worked really, really hard, obviously, the first semester and the second semester. I studied all the time. It was my life. Um, and I ended up doing pretty, I did pretty well first semester. I finished my, uh, with about a 3.8, about a 3.8, a 3.79, whatever, um, GPA, which was great. But then second semester, which made it even harder for people who know, you know, didn't necessarily make the... 3.5 GPA the first semester, it got harder because the averages, the exam averages were ridiculous. And I mean, very, very high, especially for science classes. Like coming from undergrad, I got used to having some exam averages like in the 60s, which sounds crazy, but that was normal for science classes, especially, you know, in undergrad. But here in the master's program at the med school, these exam averages weren't that low they were sometimes in the 80s but the killer was the standard deviation i don't know how this was calculated i'm not a statistics person and i don't yeah i don't like that stuff but one standard deviation above the mean was so high so high like that's what you needed to get an a and for a lot of exams it turned out that in order to get an a you could only get one wrong insane so in others, it would be like, if you get like six wrong, you'll maybe get an A minus, get any more than that wrong, like get 10 wrong on an exam, then you'll end up with like a B. And a B wasn't enough. A B plus wasn't enough. You needed to get A's and A minuses, especially in certain classes. So that sort of environment created a lot of tension, especially second semester. It created a very competitive environment. It was crazy and I was nervous even going in I was nervous because I had my experience in undergrad telling me I, like, my GPA from undergrad wasn't even a 3.5 so I was coming into this master's program taking med school classes and I had never even achieved a 3.5 GPA uh, or maintained a solid 3.5 GPA I mean like one semester I was higher than a 3.5, but it averaged out to my other semester, so that way I, I was always hovering maybe just below a 3.5, like my whole undergrad life. Um, okay, <laughs> so coming into the master's program before I even started, I was met with a lot of opposition from my family members, uh, family members closest to me, and that was very unfortunate because I was going nuts. I just, I wanted to do something. I wanted to try this thing and I knew it was gonna be difficult. So I was like, you know what, maybe I can make it. I'm gonna try to make it. I'm gonna do my best to meet this, these requirements and get that 3.5 GPA and I'm gonna pass this exam at the end of the year. But before I even left, someone very close to me, I will not say who, told me that it probably wasn't gonna work out. Like. That was so disappointing. Like, I wasn't really surprised by that statement because this person had been telling, like, saying anything and everything that this, they could to me to get me to not go to the school and to get me to go someplace else and to get me to go live where they wanted me to live. But I was. I didn't want to, like, I felt like I knew exactly where I needed to be. I knew exactly what I needed to do. Like, I had done all this research about what the next step I needed to take was. And I, I just really felt like it was right, especially after going for my interview. I felt like this school was the place that I needed to be. And this person tried to say everything that they could to make me change my mind. And even, like, telling me that they didn't think that it was going to work out for me, which... I didn't, I didn't need that going in. It was going to be a competitive environment. I knew that, but I didn't know exactly how competitive it was going to end up being. But I knew it was going to be tough for me. I knew it was going to be hard. And I already had some doubts within myself. And it's like someone who you expect to be your number one support system or person tells you that they don't think it's going to work out for you. Like, dude, really? So that was... That sucked. But I learned something very important and that's that I cannot look outside of me 
for a cheerleader. Yeah, there are going to be people along the way that cheer you on. And there are also going to be people that try to tear you down and speak doubts into your life. But that's fine because as long as you have a blockade for those who doubt and you don't doubt you, you'll Say be fine. The year of my special master's program which was just last year, I worked harder than I ever had in my life and I studied harder than I ever had in my life. And I feel like in that one year, I learned more than I learned in all four years of undergrad. So it was a great experience. I'm grateful for it. And I don't know how I would have done med school without it. I really don't. I have a clue. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm glad I went with my gut and I'm glad I didn't give in or cave in to the negativity that some people tried to speak to me because it just I didn't need that uh yeah worry about yourself don't listen to the haters literally worry about yourself because people may seem like <sighs> they have it all going good or they'll put on a certain face in front of you but they ain't gonna be with you in the end mm -mm. Worry about yourself. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs>